Hello everybody, and welcome back to Space Engine. I'm sorry it's been... Well, it's been about a week since I've uploaded a video. But that's because I've, I've, I've... As I mentioned earlier, I've been moving this month, so... I've been very busy. But I am now officially moved, and... Well, I'm unpacked anyways. So I can actually get back to making videos and the... Ooh, and the like. Which is fantastic. Where we left off, we were at this cool desert. It looks quite pretty, as we slowly just back away from it. Ain't that nice. Let me get faster. Mm. Oh, it's actually the moon. It was a moon of yonder gas giant. Alright, enough of that before I uh, make us nauseous. Let's look for planets. Da 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 Ooh, three with life. Ooh, that sounds fantastic. Oh, my arm. Why is it doing that? Muscle is spasming. That is not good. Probably not getting enough potassium. Oh, <sighs> what is new? What is new in the world? Well, a lot of stuff that's new in the world. But what if, what if it is it's useful? I'm not sure. Oh, here we go. Subglacier life on a frozen titan. Well, let's go there. <laughs> so apparently the movie Mad Max has been getting a lot of uh, positive press. I liked Mad Max. I should probably actually go watch that one of these days, but I just do not like movie theaters. I just, I just, I can't stand them. All right, Frozen Titan. Uh, go away. What are we looking at here? That is not what I was looking for. How do I do this thing again? Info. Alright. A biogenic, subglacier, multicellular. Interesting, interesting. Oh, it looks like Titan. Hmm. Well then, let's carry on. Actually, one thing that's worth talking about, um, as I'm sure you all know about Mars 1, which was, which is that uh, plan to set up a colony on Mars in 20... Oh, there we go. Ooh, it's an ice giant. We just set up a uh, colony on Mars by 2027 or something like that. Well, there's recently been announced there's another international uh, non... What was that? Another international type thing that wants to set up a colony on Mars 2. They're called Mars Polar, and they're hoping to send one by 2029 or something like that. And it's going to be semi-one-way, so the colonists can actually, like, after a decade, have the opportunity to come back, because they're going to launch a, uh, an ERV, Earth Return Vehicle, and it's going to be uh, really cool. Now, whether or not... Oh. Hmm. I was... I haven't found that yet. Sorry, it's like all the plants I've seen are uh, abiogenic, but this one was panspermia, so that means this one, the life on this planet, is not native to this planet. Excellent. That means that the offending planet, or the offending contaminator, is around here somewhere. I'm thinking it might be on the other planet, or the other star. three planets that have life. So three of these have life. I saw the Titan. Oh, it's the Oceana. So the life from this could have come from the Titan or the Oceana. So let's, let's explore this. Anyways, as I was saying, uh, I don't know which one, if any, are going to actually make it, you know, to their goals and actually get to Mars. I hope so. But the biggest thing for me is that the fact that there's more than one now uh, sperm or uh, spurs competition, which would you know push things out further and faster. So uh, I'm hoping that more and more uh, non-government companies start trying to uh, get to Mars and set up colonies or outposts or whatnot, especially like in the asteroid mining field because it's a p it's very clear that. Uh, general national interest is not going to push us into space, but 
<laughs> money probably can and probably will, so that's to be expected. That's just that's just pretty. However, oh, I want to check out the other. Oh, I don't want that. I want to check out the other planet, the Oceana with life. Nope. What I do? Oh. 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 oh I'm, I'm breaking stuff. Oh, I'm breaking stuff. What's that? Oh. Uh oh. Don't worry, I can fix this. Um. Right. Anyways. And so, whatever gets sell into space faster, the better. It's actually interesting, because a colony on Mars versus a colony on the moon, I've mentioned this before in other videos, I, I think. It's like, sure, the moon is closer, but it's a little less practical. Let's check out the info. Abiogenic. Okay, so the two of the planets are abiogenic, one of them is panspermia, which means that life could have been transported between these planets. This is marine. Yeah, because like uh, on the moon, the gravity is still low enough that uh, people could pro will probably still um, suffer the effects of microgravity and like bone bone loss and muscle atrophy. So it's just not practical for uh, long-term human habitation. Outposts, yeah, but a colony? No, not right now. Whereas Mars might have strong enough gravity to negate those effects, so... Oh. What a green planet. It's like Amphibios 9 or whatever planet Kip is from in uh, Futurama. Actually, that's more swamp. This is more like actual ocean. Let's go for a dive then. Oh, what was that? I saw something. Welcome to the oceanic Jacques Cousteau. Oh. No, I guess those are just glitches or um, pixels. Yeah, I'm being a little quiet right now, uh, so if I sound weird, that, 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 that's why. Ooh, I'm stuttering too. Oh, we really made it. Okay, let's, let's get out of here. As much fun as green watered planets are, I want to continue on my trek through the stars. Ha 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 ha. I'm not funny, I'm sorry. Seven minutes. Um, main sequence, binary. Uh, no, 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 no. Oh, that's not working. I'm also interested in uh, the idea of colonizing Titan. However, Titan's gravity is a little less than that of the, of the moon, so you suffer the same issues with the moon itself. But the thing about Titan is that its atmosphere is actually thicker than Earth's by like a half. It's like point. It's like 1.5 uh, Earth's. Yeah, like that of Earth. So it's roughly uh, heavier than Earth's by a half. Which makes it interesting because that means you do not need pressure domes on the surface. If you had, uh, there we go, a colony, you just need, aha, uh -huh, you just need um, insulating environment, like insulating enclosures, because you can actually have the internal pressure of the uh, habitat the same as the outside pressure of Titan, and it would be perfectly fine for human habitation. And actually, the atmosphere also it doesn't have too much. Well, it does have toxic elements, but its main issue is that, are you serious? Is that it doesn't have, um, okay, I suppose, it's, a, it's an ice world, is that it doesn't have, um, abiogenic. It doesn't have oxygen, there we go. So if you were to walk outside on the surface of Titan, you would just need an oxygen, you basically need an oxygen mask and a very warm coat, but other than that, you wouldn't need anything else. Actually, oh, I remember reading something where it's like because of like there's like no wind on the surface, or at least very little most of the time, you wouldn't need that heavy of a coat because although it's very 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 cold, like liquid methane on the surface, it wouldn't feel that cold if you were like out there. So it's like you could technically just have like a um, uh, oh another one, you could have a uh, like a coat similar to what they wear. Um, at the uh, in 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 uh, in it uh, at the Arctic Research Outposts, and you could probably get away with that for uh, a few hours on the surface, not for much longer, mind you, but you could probably get away with that. Or there's these, this company; they're making coats where they're lining them with aerogel, and they make them like way more uh, insulating than anything else going. Oh, okay, so the actual plant does. 
and I was actually watching under the planet talking about them. They had this, like, these coats are about as thin as like a windbreaker, but because they have this thin, like half, like a centimeter or half a centimeter layer of um, aerogel, that's like ultra insulating. You can actually wear this really thin coat. It's like kind of like a windbreaker or a light jacket, and uh, you can actually get sprayed with liquid nitrogen, and you will not feel the liquid nitrogen. It's really cool. Because they even like had the guy wear it, and they sprayed him for on head sensors and all that. And it was actually uh, I was quite impressed with it because like that would make so much things easier. Abiogenic, okay. I think EVA spacesuits, or at least some of them use aerogel as insulation. I'm not too sure about that. Citation needed. But basically, yeah, you can have something like that, like a, an aerogel insulated coat and uh, an oxygen mask, and you could go out there just fine. Like, you could actually feel the Titan air on your skin, and you it would you would be fine. Not for... Again, it's it's still very, very cold, mind you. It's just that since there's no wind, um, heat wouldn't... Um, it wouldn't convect off your skin as fast as if there was wind, so... When I say you can have your open skin out, it's like, you can, but not for very long. Like, you would still get cold. <laughs> ah, go. Because like, even, like, in the Arctic, uh, when it's, like, really, really cold, if there's no wind, um, you cool off a lot slower. So even if it's, like, minus 60 out, like, minus 60 Celsius, um, which is, like, minus 100 and something Fahrenheit, I don't know. Uh, even if you're like that, you can still walk out there without, um, like a scarf or like something covering your face, and you won't feel like your face won't be won't feel cold right away. It'll take a few minutes before you start feeling cold, or if you're walking around or stuff like that. So it's like abiogenic. So it's like yeah, on Titan you could theoretically just walk around with like just an oxygen mask and a coat and a hat and some gloves. And uh, you'd be fine. Like you wouldn't have to worry about exposed skin on your face as long as there isn't a lot of exposed skin. So it's like that's just it's really cool. Like I can just imagine walking around Titan in basically Arctic research gear and a fireman's oxygen mask, and that's all you would need because the air pressure is similar to Earth's, actually more than Earth. And another fun thing about Titan is because its gravity is is lower than the Moon's, but its atmosphere is thicker than the Earth's you could actually like strap wings onto your arm and you could actually glide and even fly in some cases on Titan just by flapping your arms with wings attached to them which sounds remarkably cool and remarkably fun and I want to try it unfortunately I can't go to Titan right now yet <laughs> but yeah so that's just interesting uh, science or interesting trivia of the solar system is that a human with wings strapped to their arms could actually fly on Titan. Well, that's nice. Let's see if I can get a nice little shot, including the crater rim. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's nice. That is nice. And there's Mars, where its gravity is lower, but its atmosphere is so thin. Actually, I like watching old programs uh, prior to the 50s about Mars, because that was before they knew jack shit about Mars. Like especially this one, um, oh, this one Disney. It was like a, a special. Oh, I saw someone with life. There we go. And it was it was all about uh, Mars and the possibilities of going to Mars. And they had Warner von Braun on it. They talked about all this stuff. But uh, they were at this one segment. They were talking about all the various forms of life that may exist on Mars and all the weird phenomenon. And it was all animated. And it was really cool. And they had like. Um, creatures that ate the rock, and they had um, silicon-based spires that grew and just in, the, in the night and then destroyed during the day, and they had giant uh, flying creatures that had massive wings, and it was really cool. Like it was all like, of course, it, that's not what Mars is like, but I really love the uh, the possibilities of the time. Like <laughs> I always say, it's like um, space exploration has ruined space for science fiction. Like, it really has, because back in the day, you could have invaders from Mars, and it wasn't inaccurate, because for all we knew, there were people on Mars, <laughs> or there were weird life on Venus, or weird life everywhere. Like, I remember, like, some shows um, back in the day I used to watch, and even shows that were just old that I would watch nowadays, because watching cartoons when you're an adult is cool, 
um, <laughs> uh, there was like they have life on on Titan and life on Venus and life on Pluto and life on Jupiter and actually some of that may actually still turn out to be real, especially life on Titan and there could potentially be fly floating things in the atmospheres of Jupiter for all we know and there might be sulfur based bacteria living in the upper atmosphere on Venus. Like the possibilities are all there. It's just it comes down to practicality. It's like organic molecules fall apart at the surface of Venus because of its high temperatures and crushing pressures, so the only way for life to really have developed there is if it developed before its atmosphere got thick, or if it was brought there somewhere else that, yeah. But, or there could be silica, like different forms of biochemistry on the surface, who knows, but there doesn't seem to be all that much in the ways of energy uh, on the surface to promote, at least not anymore, to promote uh, organic, or to promote life growth on uh, the planet. So I can, you know, you can pretty much say that more, uh, abiogenic, terrestrial, organic. So we can, you know, we can pretty much say that, yeah, okay, Venus is a dead planet with almost 100% certainty, but I'm still going to leave out 1%. So I'll say 99% because I'll see 1% for that just in case we there is a form of, of um, life that isn't organic or if there is organic life living in the upper atmosphere it's like we just don't know we haven't invested that much time into it so i'm not going to say for sure that venus has no life on it it probably doesn't but there's still that one chance or like titan um oh, i forget his name but there's an astrobiologist i always read a lot of his stuff because he's uh i agree with him on a lot of stuff and he's also just like really cool but um he, he was postulating ideas about titan about how it's like life on Earth, like micro, like unicellular life is small, because water is a very abundant source of nutrients. But on Titan, you could have uh, microscopic, or you could have uh, single-celled organisms that are like meters long, like you know, giant sheets of paper, of like organic paper, basically that that float in these mare of liquid and methane, and. Uh, what they would respirate is like they wouldn't respirate oxygen. They'd probably respirate. Uh, oop, they'd probably respirate hydrogen. Uh, just by just the the cycle on uh, on Titan, and uh, during the Huygens landing on Titan, they found that in the upper atmosphere there was a lot of hydrogen in Titan's atmosphere, and then midway down in the atmosphere there's a lot of hydrogen in Titan's atmosphere, but at the surface there was a depletion of hydrogen, like there was a distinct cutoff of hydrogen at the surface of Titan as opposed to the um, the upper atmospheres, and that isn't quite explained yet. It might be chemical, but it seems that uh, the more likely option for that is actually it's biological that's being respirated by something on the surface. Again, we don't know for sure. We only, we only sent one probe there, and it only lasted a few minutes, like or like maybe 20 minutes before its batteries died, and it wasn't looking for life. It was looking for some other stuff, but still, it's like, um, that's why I was big into the, uh, the NASA's Mare uh, ooh, has marine and terrestrial. The Mare uh, Explorer on Titan, but it unfortunately lost its funding to um, InSight, which is the next Mars lander, which is going to be launched 2016. Which made me a little upset because it's like we have a lot of stuff on on Mars, and I know that Mars is very practical for our immediate future, but I still think that if we just took the time and the funding to look for life on Titan, we would find it. So I was a little upset that that went the way it did, but whatever. <laughs> Crying about it won't solve, won't, won't change anything, so I'll just uh, keep waiting for the next Titan mission, which there are a number of missions. Like I'm, They're thinking of bringing back the Mare Explorer for a future mission. Like They, they didn't just cut it out completely. But yeah, um, the prospect of there being large like paper, sheets of paper, of organic paper, respirating hydrogen and eating organic molecules in the uh, the mare of Titan, uh, floating in these lakes and oceans of liquid methane is just it's it's fascinating, and it's it's like that's like the, the cornerstone of uh, my main field of research and what I'm going for my degree in astrobiology. Is a lot of it is based on uh, the interesting concepts that you could find with Titan and planets. Cause if, like, if you find life on Titan, 
Actually, let's, let, let's back up a little bit. If you find life on Mars, say, uh, microscopic life, there's a decent chance that the life on Earth and Mars are going to be related through uh, panspermia because um, material is shared between the planets quite frequently, and it's like we're really, really close celestially. So uh, there's not like throughout the billions of years that you know life has existed on Earth, anyways. There's a good chance that life may have been shared, and actually. I suspect if we find commonality between life on Mars and life on Earth, I suspect that it would be um, life started on Mars first, <clears throat> because Mars has it's it's smaller, so it actually cooled faster and it developed a uh, habitable environment oop, faster than Earth did. But also because it's smaller, it has lower gravity um, and it required lower energy to get something off the surface into an escape velocity. And the lower the energy needed, the more likely life would survive the transition. Because I'm talking, in order for life to transmi transfer between Earth and Mars, uh, there would have to be a meteor impact or a volcanic eruption that launched the material into, uh, into space. So on Mars, it would take a much smaller uh, asteroid or meteor hitting the surface to send debris into an escape velocity off Mars, which increased the chances of, the, of life surviving that. So I just suspect, looking at all these things, the Statistically, life, if we, if we found a commonality, um, life would probably have started on Mars, but again, I don't know, I don't have a time machine, so I can't see it, that's just a theory based on, that's, a, that's, that's my theory based on um, statistics. But uh, moving away from that, if we find life on Mars and it's actually distinctly different than life on Earth, then that means that the universe is probably full of life in all the different forms, because it means it starts all over the place. But that's nothing with Titan. Uh, Titan is far enough away, and its environment is so much more different that um, if there was life on Titan, the chances of it sharing commonality with Earth or Mars is very, very remote, just because they do not share material as often, or at all. We don't even know if material from Earth or Mars has actually made it to the outer s solar system beyond what we've sent. So if we find life on Titan, it's almost certainly... Um, um, like, native to Titan. And it would make sense, too, because the organic chemistry in Titan's atmosphere is very conducive to life. It's like, um, it produces tholines in its atmosphere from just the organic compounds, the methane and the ethane and the nitrogen getting broken down uh, by the sun and right by the UV radiation uh, in the that area, I suppose. And um, it creates this brown pigment. I talk about it all the time, because it's very fascinating stuff. Because when it mixes with water or a solvent, it spontaneously will recombine into long polymer chains and amino acids and proteins like the building blocks of life so so we have the this compound this organic compound forming on titan and it has a solvent which is the liquid methane and there's a, a cycle of a hydrological cycle or a, metho a methanogenic cycle i should say on the surface of titan that makes this stuff all up so you have energy produ you have energy to produce the compounds needed for life you have a solvent for um, life to develop in, and you have um, replenishment of resources for the life, uh, hydrogen and methane, nitrogen, you have all these compounds, so Titan is actually very conducive uh, to, the for to the development and the evolution of life, it's just, it would be very different than life on Earth, because it wouldn't be, uh, it wouldn't be oxygen respirating, and it wouldn't be water-based, it would be carbon-based like us, but it would not use oxygen or water, it would probably use, well, it would use liquid methane in place of water, and probably hydrogen in place of oxygen, but both of which are very, uh, very reasonable hypothesis for life on Titan. So, yeah, I, that's why I, I personally love Titan, it's my favorite moon. <laughs> 24 minutes, alright, I should probably go wrap this up and upload this, and let you guys get back to what you're doing, so thank you all for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and space.